and welcome back to another episode of Andrew Discusses, where today I'm talking about scams, shams, and flimflams. Oh wait, shit, Dogbert might sue me if I say that. Um, I'm talking about scams. Yeah, that should be good. Now we all know, th this happens, we, we all know what a scam is. A scam is basically simple. If you've ever seen Ed, Ed, and Eddie, you definitely know what a scam is, but here's the general concept of it. A scam is something designed to take pers money from person A, give it to person B, and without person A receiving anything except for disappointment and regret. Basically, you screw them out of something. Uh, the scams can work for a majority of things. By the way, scams are horrible, okay? Don't, don't do scams, okay? Just like you shouldn't do drugs, okay? Don't do any LSD now, okay? <laughs> I'm Mr. Mackey, and I approve this message, okay? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I'll stop now. <laughs> no, but either way, um, there's a lot of red flags that can come up with scams. And the, one of the biggest things um, is you have these people that promise you something, but you have to pay them with gift cards. First off, if you ever... <laughs> Ever get somebody calling you up and saying, oh yeah, here, I want to boost you up to the next branded cable service we offer, but you need to get me $300 worth of gift cards for, oh, I'll just pick a random site out of my head, eBay, and uh, you say, you know, this person tells you that, oh, well, you need to go purchase $300 worth of these, that is a scam, the red flag should not only be up at this point, it should be bright fucking crimson. You should not even need to go any further into this conversation to know how fucked you are. This is a scam. And you especially, if you are stupid enough to fall for this, don't pay cash. You are just begging, begging for them to come and screw you again. If you pay in cash. Not only that, but you will become the laughing stock of all your friends and family. You know we'll never let you live that down. That'll be every holiday season. Well, how was your ho how was your year, dear? Oh, it was great. Hey, guys, how was your year? Oh, well, well we kind of had a life you know, altering less than this year. Yeah, they lost $300 in a scam, and man, they acted stupid. Paid in fucking cash, too, like total noobs. My God, those people had them hook, line, and sucker. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sad but true. But either way, you should not fall for scams. I, I don't even understand how people still manage to. I mean, if somebody's selling you snake oil, you know it's not going to work. You know it's garbage. If it's freaking snake oil, it's what it is. But the part that I get the kick out of is when people, when they're asking you for, like, oh, well, you need to go and get us, you know, gift cards for, like, let's say, eBay or Amazon. First off, red flag. Not, not even red flag anymore. We're talking bright fucking crimson right now. This thing is glowing a bright crimson glow. Okay? This thing is massively bad news. But no, you're still going to double down on the stupidity and go, well, it's they're going to give us something good in return. They're scamming your ass, you morons. Second off, whenever they're asking you for, like, a Western Union money transfer, that one kind of also jumps to the red flag level. Mostly because if you've ever seen a lot of those YouTube videos, there are a lot of scammers out there that will pull that bullshit. Again, red flag. Massive red flag. If they're contacting you and they go, oh, we have all your information. And the thing is, this is how they get your information. Okay, because we had this happen when my grandfather was still alive with the fucking electric company. So what the electric company, um, you know, what, what the scam was with that is these other electric companies were coming around and they're like, oh, well, you're going to get this, you know, rebate on, you know, electricity. Or, oh, we're going to... Oh, you have a chance to save like two, three hundred dollars, and you'll get a rebate check uh, from the electric company for two, three hundred dollars, and you're going to be really good. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, okay, that's fine. 
And then it's, oh, well, yo, no, you're, you're actually not getting that because what they want you to do is agree to sign up for new service through their company and ditch your current, you know, ditch your current provider. Then what they'll do is tell your current provider, oh, no, 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 they came to us of their own free will. And here you think that your current provider is still providing you with said electricity and they're not. And how they go about getting all the information is actually very simple. Either A, there's a mole in the organization, which is usually about 90% of the time somebody's feeding them the information. B, they're literally taking pot shots in the dark. C, they're scanning online shit or they've hacked the database, which usually is hacking the database. It goes along with mole inside the organization. Or my personal favorite, they just somehow managed to get to your mail before you did, and they put two and two together. Yeah, that's sort of how it goes then. So they usually just get like all your information, like your name, your address. They get your customer information. And the problem with that is, first off, none of that shit's private. So don't even start going on the whole, well, that's private information. Yeah, it's private to within the company. Unfortunately, there are things called loopholes. They suck for a reason, but God knows they exist. And the loopholes kind of make it so that they're not illegal. So you still get screwed one way or another. Because somehow they'll get the information and they'll claim it was public knowledge if you try taking their asses to court. Again, good luck with that. But they'll get your information and they'll go, oh yeah, you know, we have this, this, and this. And a majority of the time, because keep in mind, there are like all the times if you like call the 1-800 number, you call customer support and they put you on hold. They, they usually say, you know, your information is being, you know, you know, your call is being monitored for quality assurance. There's a good time that monitor is the one that's selling you the information because they're just getting paid to sit there and listen to people bitch and they're on hold, you know, and listen to the shitty elevator music or muskrat love piano version, which by the way is horrible. So of course, and I'm not even going to lie here with this. Okay. So of course you're going to have them up and sell information to the highest bidder. In this case, the highest bidder could be, you know, person A, person B, or person C. But let's go with person C. So person C just bid and bought your information. And there you go. You also have the whole nothing on the internet's private. You're being tracked all over the place. So you're constantly getting screwed eight different ways from Friday. So if you pay your bills online, you're still getting fucked. If you pay them with paper check or money order, you're still getting fucked somehow, some way. It's knowing when something's too good to be true, it usually is. If they're going to scam your ass, they're going to know how to do the dance. And you just need to know how to do it one step better. They're going to do the two-step, you need to know how to do the three-step. If they're going to dance the tango, you need to know the tango de la muerte. If they're going to dance the cha-cha, you got to know when to kick them in the balls. That's basically how it works. It's, it's basically how it works. And... When it comes to the scams, what gets the most annoyance from me is the people that they usually prey on. If they're gullible enough to fall for this, first off, they deserve a dunce hat. Uh, they deserve whatever's coming to them. There's an old saying that a fool and their money will soon be departed. And in all honesty, those would be the fools. A sucker is born every minute, and god damn if that isn't true. So of course, you're always going to have that issue. But if something's too good to be true, it fucking is. Don't fall for it. Uh, there's pyramid schemes where they get you to, oh, well, here, you get in at this, and what you do is you go around and you get other people to join in. That's a pyramid scheme. So if, let's say, uh, you have, let's say, because a lot of those are usually disguised as jobs, too. That's the worst part. So let's say that this place offers you a job and what they're doing is, you know, you pay like a $10 or $20 fee to get like this kit to sell online or something. You're not technically selling that kit. What you're selling is the opportunity for the next sucker to sell that kit. And that's what a pyramid scheme is. And a pyramid scheme actually gets worse 
the further along you go. The person at the top, and I'd want to say like up to maybe the seventh or eighth person underneath them, they're the ones that are going to be raking in the money. Everyone below that, it's survival of the fittest at that point. And that's even if they don't get caught and busted. Because pyramid schemes are sort of illegal and sort of annoying as hell hell. There are some that slide under the radar. There are some that just plain annoying. And God knows there's a lot of them that just suck. Uh, I know I fell for one years ago. And happily, it only cost me $35. So it's not like I lost a shit ton of money. But back then, 35 bucks to me was a lot of money. So I was still a little pissed. But I learned a very good lesson. Because there were people that were like, oh, this is sort of a pyramid scheme. But then there were some that were saying, oh, no, there is, you know, it's not. There's proof to back up that it wasn't. No, it, it fucking was. Those were what brings me to my next point. You have the fake uh, questionnaires. So if you've ever Googled something. Yes, my crack research team helped so many people. But if you've ever Googled something, you always get like those question and answer things right within like the first few results. And one of them is usually, you know, is this a scam or something like that? And a lot of times it'll answer yes. Then you'll have fake websites that'll pop up and it'll be like, oh, well, this isn't a scam. Okay, it isn't a scam. But then they don't exactly explain to you why it isn't a scam. It's basically, oh, no, you can get this. You know, it's a really good, you know, bang for your buck. It's perfect. But it doesn't tell you why it's not a scam because those were created by the people running the goddamn scam. The ones running the scam were like, oh, yeah, we got to find a way to screw you just one more time because we think you might not be on the fence. Hook, line, sucker. If you bought that, there's no help in you. And there you go. You have, like, the fake reviews for products. You have the fake, you know, websites telling you that, oh, no, this is totally legit. And it's just 100% bullshit. You get screwed up, down, left, right, and sideways to the point that you don't even know which way you're walking anymore. By the time you're able to get back up on your own two feet, you're pretty much fucked. And you just don't know it. You got pyramid schemes. You got the gift card scams. You have a whole slew of them. If you've ever watched Leverage, there's a whole shit ton of cons and hustles. And a lot of cons are what these fucking are. And people are just too idiotically stupid to fall for them. Because, like, oh, no, if you have an ounce of common sense, you're not going to fall for these. Red flags will shoot up automatically. And a lot of times it's those ones that are hidden, like, telemarketers or insurance things. Like, you know, oh, your car's warranty is about to expire. You need to get a hold of us immediately. There was one years ago with uh, tax evasion. Oh, well, the government's going to be coming and knocking on your door. The local authorities will come and arrest you. I remember getting a few of those, and I, honest to God, just laughed them off. Because, in all honesty, they're not going to call and warn you. They're just going to show up at the front fucking door. Why give you a courtesy call? That would be like if you know you're about to get raided by the FBI, and the FBI just calls you five minutes before they show up and go, Hey, we're like five minutes out from your place. We're just going to come there, you know, kick your front door in, throw a couple of your guests against the wall, arrest you guys for the following charges. It's, don't worry, though. It's going to be a good day. I mean, it's going to be really fun. You'll get a you'll get a choice of a Dr. Pepper or a Pepsi as you're in the holding cell. It's going to be in a really chintzy, shitty plastic cup, though. But you're going to like it. And on top of that, today's entertainment movie is a SpongeBob movie. We know you'll love that. So, of course, you have that nightmare going on. So, yeah, no, that was just not going to happen. If they're calling you up to giving you a forewarning, it's bullshit. Their tactic is to scare your ass into giving them what they want. It's the whole thing with, like, ransomware that was put out a while back. And it's still effective. It's still affecting people yet today, too. Because what it does is it locks up your computer until you pay a certain amount of money to a certain group of people. Once you pay, they unlock it. Problem is, now they have access to your computer. So all they have to do is just do the same thing again if they need some more cash. Hey, you know, you paid us last time. You can pay us this time, too. Because we know you have the money. No, it took everything I had the last time. Oh, we'll just lie, cheat, steal, borrow. You'll get it. Then just pay us again and we'll unlock your system. Because you did something illegal. The thing is, there are ways to stop all of this. 
you just honestly have to do due diligence, keep your eyes peeled. If it smells like it's BS, it's BS. Don't even try it. If it smells bullshit, it's bullshit. If it quacks like a duck and walks like a duck, it's a duck. If it quacks like a duck but walks like a dog, chances are you got a freak of nature there. You should run like hell. There's no chance in hell of any of this stuff panning out. Now, sometimes you do get some legitimate stuff that does come around as sort of like a scam. And sadly, those are the ones that fall way under the wayside because of all the scam artists. You can't exactly isolate isolate what's good and what's bad because you're on the lookout for everything that's bad. You don't know what could possibly be good. So there is that. But anyway, remember, kids, if it smells too good to be true, chances are it's bullshit. And if you think the red flag should go crimson, run. Seriously, just run. But anyway, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Have you ever gotten stuck in this game? Did you ever fall for one? Let me know in the comments section below. And until next time, I'm Andrew Rhodes, and this has been Andrew Rants. Oh, sorry. It's not Andrew Rants. This is Andrew Discusses. See, I almost screwed myself there. <laughs> I don't need to screw myself. Everybody else does that for me.